God tells me. And you guys got the message just yesterday evening. And you are here. Just like that. Meaning you are ready anytime, whenever. So just thank him for making it possible. Some of you had to work, but you had to leave work early just to be here. Today you're going to be lost in his presence. You're not going to get distracted today. Hey! Do not let me go the same way I can. Touch me with your hands. Jesus. Do not let me go the same way I can. Touch me with your hands, Jesus. This song that I'm singing, yesterday I was with my mom in her closet. She was praying, keyboard keep playing. And all of a sudden, she said this song keeps playing in her spirit. I was there with her when she started looking for it on YouTube. She found several versions of it, but she didn't like it. And this particular lady, she found this version of this lady. And my mom started to cry and speak in tongues. I was just there just watching this beautiful encounter. Hey! But the song was not really meant for her. It was for me to sing it here today do you know what it means do not let me go the same way that I came today touch me with your hands Jesus God told me today that people that are sick will not leave here sick he told me hey whatever it is that has been troubling you you would live here without it that's why he's not going to let you go the same way that you came. So today, before I came here, the song started to sing in my spirit. I knew I had to sing it here today. So you will sing this song with all your heart. Oh, touch me with your hands, Jesus. Do not let me go the same way I came. Touch me with your hand. Touch me with your head, Jesus. Jesus, do not let me go. Do not let me go the same way I came. Touch me with your hand. Touch me with your hands, Jesus. Sing it, everybody. Sing it with all your heart. Don't just sing it because it's a song. Sing it like it's a prayer. Like it's a prayer request. From your heart. Jesus is here. Hey. Do not let me go. Speak in tongues wherever you are. Receive new tongues in the name of Jesus. Even the people that are watching online. Receive new tongues right now in the name of Jesus. Do not let me go the same way I can. Touch me with your hand. Touch me, Lord Jesus. Oh, just worship the Lord. Oh yes, we love you, Jesus. 
We need your touch, Lord. We need your touch, Lord. We need your touch, Lord. If you're watching online, feel free to share this video. Somebody is going to be blessed today. Somebody will not leave the same way that they came on the video. Oh! Holy Ghost, do it again, do it again in my To see his eyes, he's seated upon the throne. I just want to say, Baba, a shame. I just want to say, Baba, a shame. I just want to say, I just, I just want to say, my body, oh, a shit, a shit, I just want to say, a shit, I just want to say, oh, my body. Oh, yes, Lord. Hey! I see angels. I see angels. <laughs> At this time, you don't want to worry about any problem anymore. You want to focus on Jesus. That bill that you are worried about, focus on Jesus right now. And he will miraculously take care of it for you. I'm telling you right now. You need to be sensitive in the spirit. Oh, the presence of the Holy Ghost is so strong in this place right now. Oh, shagalaha. Be filled with the Holy Ghost wherever you are. Be filled with the Holy Ghost wherever you are. In the name of Jesus, receive a fresh fire. I love you. Right now. In the name of Jesus, speak it tongue like never before. In the name of Jesus, new tongues I hear French, Chinese, Spanish, languages that you've never spoken before. Speak it. Speak it. Some of you will start to feel chills all over your body. Some of you will start to feel tingling sensation. Some of you will start to have goosebumps on your body. Some of you will start to laugh uncontrollably right now. Some of you will feel heat in your belly. The power of the Holy Ghost. Oh. I just want to say. Baba. Oh. 
I just want to say Baba I just want to say Baba I just want to say Baba I hear somebody you are looking for the fruit of the womb I hear it so clearly God is going to give you what you want but guess what I hear triplets clearly in my spirit receive it right now in the name of Jesus you will be blessed with three children at once receive it in the name of Jesus That is looking for the fruit of the womb. I have prayed for so many people. We have hundreds of testimonies posted. So you better believe what I'm telling you. Whatever has blocked your womb, I command it to be unblocked right now by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Receive your children right now. In the name of Jesus, you will come back with testimonies two weeks from now. It is happening already. Shake it, Ibaha. Race it, Ibo. Sapala hand, Ibo. Saha. This song keeps coming to my spirit. O gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. Why on others thou art calling? Do not pass. so strong rickety prisit nigaha rasaka balahanda ha le palibo shit in it oh i hear fibroid so many people have fibroid i command everyone that has fibroid i command that fibroid in your belly to begin to melt away right now melt away right now melt away right now by the power of the holy ghost in the name of jesus Melt away right now in the name of Jesus. Instantly, you will start to feel heat in your belly. If you've been told you have fibroid, as I am praying this prayer right now, you will begin to feel heat in your belly because it is melting away. Right now, by the power of the Holy Ghost, every single atom of fibroid in your body, I command it to melt away right now. In the name of Jesus. is not your portion anyone that is going through that process of breast cancer 
cancer, having breast cancer. I command total healing right now in the name of Jesus. Some of you watching or some of you here, you have been afraid of breast cancer. I hear it clearly in my spirit. You don't have it, but you're always afraid of it. I cast away that fear of breast cancer in the name of Jesus. You will never have it. You will never have it in the name of Jesus. to you right now shake it you will feel electric shock come over you right now just like he said it will happen that anointing that you just asked for it is going to fall upon you so strongly Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Share this video. If you're watching online, somebody's life will change. Somebody will not be the same after watching this. Somebody will have an encounter with the Holy Ghost. Somebody is going to be healed. Somebody will be saved. Somebody's life will change. Jesus. Somebody, I hear it clearly in my spirit. He says you are troubled in your spirit. I don't know who you are. I don't know what's troubling you. Every spirit that is troubling you, every evil spirit that is causing you to worry so much, I cast it out of you right now in the name of Jesus. Receive supernatural peace and joy right now. In the name of Jesus, you will not be troubled any longer. In the name of Jesus. sing this song.
you, Holy Spirit, for your presence. Oh, another song just came to my spirit. We bow down and worship Yahweh. All is written in the Bible, sir. We bow down and we worship Yahweh. We bow down, we bow down. Everybody sing it with me, if you know it. We bow down and we worship Yahweh. Oh, Yahweh. We bow down and we worship Yahweh. Holy Spirit for your presence as we continue may your presence never leave us in the name of Jesus even as I give this message that you gave me a few hours ago may people be blessed in the name of Jesus may they not just hear it but may they also do what it says in the name of Jesus Every expectation that they came with I know they would not leave disappointed even the ones watching online at the end of this they will be full in the name of Jesus there shall be testimonies after today in the name of Jesus thank you Jesus for in Jesus name I pray amen you may be seated I hope you guys share the video on Facebook, all of you, I shared it too. Let me see if they can hear me. Can somebody see if they can hear us clearly? You guys watching online, can you hear? I want to make sure you can hear before I start. If you can hear, say something. Type it. I'm, I'm going to read your comments. Can you hear clearly? Is, is it clear? Can you hear? Yes. Okay. God bless you for responding. I try to make it available for you guys online. Nobody is holding it. We're doing it professionally. Just so you guys can be blessed. God bless you all. All right. So yesterday was my, um, was Saturday. Today's Sunday. And last week, I posted on Facebook. Last week, Friday. Keyboard, I still want you, but you know I. Yeah, don't make it too loud, but let me hear it. I need to hear it. Can't hear it. Heck, good job. You know how I like it. So I, I, t I told you guys online that I was going to take three weeks to spend time with my God. So Friday was a week. Yesterday, I was just praying as usual. And God says, you should do a fellowship today. I said, and then I called him. It was almost 6 p.m. <laughs> but the thing with God is when he tells you to do something, you do it. Even if it's only two people, three people, see God's way of success or looking at success is not the way the world looks at it. There could be a reason why he asked you to do it. It could not even be for anybody here. It could be for somebody online. It could be for somebody that will watch the video two weeks from now. 
but you just obey. So I called him and we talked and I'm luckily, not luckily, whenever God tells you to do something, the, the spot will be available. Normally it's not always available, but it was available for me to use it. And then I thought I had a message because he's been giving me a lot of messages for this one week that I was away. So one hour before coming here, I was just laying on my bed, just in the spirit, meditating. And then, and I started talking to God. I said, Lord, I want to be different from all the other people, other men of God, other women of God, other people of God. I want to be like Jesus, not just saying it. I want to, I want to be like him in the public and, and when I'm alone. Because you know, some people, they have two people in them. In the public, they are like Jesus. But when they go and nobody knows them in that area, <laughs> They're like somebody else. I said, Lord, I want to be taken on my ways and somebody is watching me and I don't know and they still see me like Jesus. Do you understand? These are the kind of prayers I pray. Please, I want to make you proud. I want to be good from inside and outside. This was around, when did we leave the house, mommy? At around 5.30. I, I, this prayer I was doing at 4 I wasn't even like talking. I was meditating. You know how you can be talking to God, man of God, you know what I mean? But your mouth is not open. You're, you're not speaking. Somebody may be in the room with you and they don't know that's what you're telling God. Exactly. So that's, the, that's how I was on my bed. I said, Lord, I love you so much. I'm not doing anything for sure. I don't want to do this because I want people to love me. I don't want to do this because I want people to say, oh, she's so anointed. I could care less about that. I want to do this because I want to make you proud the same way Jesus made you proud when he came here. So how can I be like him from inside and out? Like, I mean, like somebody that didn't tell me they are coming to visit just surprises me. And they, could, they didn't tell me for one hour they were watching me. And for that one hour, I was good. You understand? Not when I feel like I'm alone. I'm like, okay, it's time to, it's time to, you know, start to show some things that you don't do. Start to use curse word. Or, I'm just saying like, he's like, oh my God, I can finally be myself. Ah. Some people do this for a show. But how long would you keep pretending? One day your true color will come out. Maybe one day somebody piss you off. You will just go off. <laughs> You're like, okay, okay, okay. Make we leave this church thing. Oh yeah, come here. Who would they talk to like this? Eh? You know, there's a face, you know, like <laughs> something will come out of you that, but I want to actually be like Jesus. And God started to speak to me. Hey! Scriptures started flowing. Do you know, I pray all of you have the encounter that I have with you. In fact, even better encounters with God. I don't know why people say God don't speak to them. God speaks to his children. See, if you really want to hear from God, even right now, he's speaking to some of you. If you ask God something, a question that you need an answer for, and you stay in that place, meditating, and you are in the spirit, the answer comes almost immediately. Don't be fooled. Don't think you need the answer from two weeks. No. That's why sometimes it's really, not sometimes, all the time it's good to fast. I've been fasting. I haven't had food for days. Do you know what that does? The flesh becomes so weak. You get your ears like you you can hear everything. Even when I'm sleeping at night, I hear even the smallest sound of the insect. It's like I'm so super charged spiritually. I wake up, I was just telling my mom for two, three days now. God wakes me up at 3 a.m. Exactly at 3 a.m. The first time he woke me up, I thought I was awake, and then I see a big two head, a two horn, like a demon standing, a big one. And my whole body became numb. I couldn't 
do nothing. He wanted me to see it. I started saying, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. I couldn't move. And then it, it disappeared. And then I now woke up. I thought I was awake. But he woke me up to see what was about to happen. I started speaking in tongues. Repeated it. The next time, at three again. I did not know the significance of that. But I read somewhere that at 12 a.m., 3 a.m., those are like peak times of spiritual attacks or something or even angel visitation. I just read that today somewhere. But I didn't know because most of the experiences I've had with God, I had to learn my own way from what I encountered. I don't really know. I just use my own experience. The next time he woke me up at 3, this was like two days ago. And this was the scripture he gave me. I was supposed to give that as a message. I need to find that one. Jude 1 20 he said but ye beloved building up yourselves on your most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost I had to look for another translation this was everybody was sleeping but you dear friends must build each other up in your most holy faith praying the power of the Holy Spirit the moment I read it in the second translation I don't know what happened to my tongue I started speaking in tongues I spoke in tongues for hours like I heard it in my dream. I woke up with it saying, you know how a scripture keeps repeating? Like the voice is like right next to me reading the scripture. I have to go find it in the Bible. I started speaking in tongues. So it's been a good encounter for this one week that I've been with God. I'm going to two weeks now. I encourage all of you, both the ones watching. Once in a while, you need to take yourself out of all the noise, all the distraction. America can be so busy. That's why some people probably when they first moved to this country, they were so anointed, so on fire for God. And then the busy, busy schedule of this country, <laughs> they barely have time to even pray. They work how many hours, they come home, sleep. But for those that have the time, you can make the time. We do really have time. Some of you watch shows three, four, five, six hours. You catch up with all your shows. That should be time to spend with God. And he will speak to you. You will not always need a prophet to be telling you things that God will tell you himself. My sister here was telling me when she came of how she was fasting for three days and God showed her a dream. Clear dream. Not, oh, I think I saw this. No, it was so clear. I think on her third day. And she asked me, what do I do? I say, he has showed you what will happen. Did you cancel it? That's something that a prophet would have told her. Maybe she had gone to a church. But she didn't need a prophet. He showed her himself. Because maybe she will never come in contact with a prophet. Not everybody have access to prophets like that. Some people don't even go to those places where they prophesy. He can speak to you directly. So today when he was speaking to me, I was smiling. I said, Lord, I'm glad that you know this is what I want to be like. Jesus. I really want to be like Jesus. I am done being like myself. I've been doing that for 35 years, 30. I, the rest of my years, I want to be like Jesus. I want to be somebody that people can say, oh, even if you catch her in a private moment, she's still like Jesus. Even if you, you put camera and watch her 24-7 in her house, she's still what she comes out to say she's, like there's nothing that will shock you in fact you will get bored watching her because what you see is what you get this was my request I didn't say Lord I want money Lord I want this Lord I want that when you're like Jesus would you lack anything was Jesus lacking <laughs> Jesus didn't lack anything though even when they wanted to pay I was just telling my mom the other day I said was well, it not him that told one of the disciples to go and bring money out of the fish mouth to pay for taxes. So if you get to a point that there's no money, you better believe Jesus is going to know where to get money out from. <laughs> Somewhere. So if I'm like Jesus, everything I want, I will have. So sometimes your prayer points too needs to change. The Bible says we should seek here first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, meaning live righteously. And everything that we need shall be added unto us. We will not need to request for it to be given. It will come and be given to us. Because guess what? God already knows what you need even before you ask. He knows what we need from now till we die. 
The car you are requesting, he knows if that car is bad for you. Sometimes you don't get it because he sees a danger with that car. Maybe there's a big default in that car that has been killing people in other countries, but they haven't announced it in the country you're in. And he doesn't give it to you. And you see all your friends driving it and you are getting mad at him. And then maybe you get a lower level of that car. And one day you hear in the news that the car is killing people. You're like, hey, thank you, Jesus. No wonder. Thank God I didn't get this car. But you're thanking him later. He's, I'm just trying to show you how he sees ahead of us. So God started giving me scriptures. And he gave me a title. I have my memo pad. If you look at my memo, you're going to see so many messages from God. Hundreds. If you hear from God and you're listening here or watching online, I encourage you to write it down. You would think you won't forget, but you will. Especially if you're like me, they're here 24 7. A man of God has told me once before, this was months ago, that God speaks to you a lot. If you don't tell the people what he's saying, he will stop speaking. Ask my mother. Every time I have message, even yesterday, God told me to come online, even though I was on a break. We were still at the event. I told my mother, Mommy, it's time for me to go. She was still eating. I said, You gotta rush. I gotta go. I have a message to give. Because whenever I hear or I remember what that man of God told me, that God speaks to you a lot. When you stop telling the people what he's saying, he will stop speaking. Do you know what my life will be like if God stops speaking to me? Empty. Jesus, then who will be speaking to me? That will be the devil now. It's a beautiful thing when God speaks to you. And I'm here to tell all of you here that God speaks to all of you. Sometimes, maybe you get up in the morning, you dress up for work, all of a sudden, I don't even want to go to work. From nowhere, somebody that is already dressed for work says she don't want to go no more. And you don't know why. In the afternoon, they call you, they say, oh, there was a big fire in work. Some people got burned. Who told you not to go to work? You think it was you? It was God that spoke to you. So when I say speak, it doesn't mean it could be a microphone in your ear. It comes in different formats, different ways. It was God that made you feel like that not to go. Because he didn't want you to be involved in that fire. So if I tell you God speaks to us a lot, you better believe it. The same way when you see some people and your spirit is just not accepting them. Who do you think is making you uncomfortable around them? It is God. And then tomorrow you find out that that person is a very evil person or something. God spoke to you. That's why you felt uncomfortable about that person. So God is, even your children, God speaks to them a lot. Even this little girl here. God speaks to her every day. So when he started speaking, he gave me the title. He says, be a doer of the word publicly and privately. I wrote it down. Be a doer of the word publicly and privately. Not only when you're holding the mic, you're doing all. When people are around you, God bless you. God bless you. It is well with you. And then you go to your house. You the crash? Or you call a girlfriend. My friend, come, come, come. Let's enjoy ourselves, I beg. But you're a pastor. Leave that thing. Uh-uh. Do you see what I'm saying? It happens a lot. We're not here to judge anybody. I'm just working on myself. And I'm giving the message to you. So you too, you work on yourself. Anybody that doesn't want to change is on them. But you don't want to be that person. He started giving me scriptures. Before I, even, before I even went all the way, I posted on Facebook. I said, oh my God, wow, God just gave me a powerful message. I can't wait to share with you guys. So when I posted it, something was like, how do you know it's God that gave you the message? And God says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. 
I had posted this scripture earlier. He gave it to me earlier. You guys saw it on my page. I didn't know why he was giving it to me. I just posted. You know, when I hear them, I just post them. But when that thing was like, how do you know it's God that gave you? He said, my daughter, don't worry. Every good gift and every perfect gift. You see how God speaks with the scriptures? That's how you know when God is speaking because he speaks. And, it, and it's in agreement with his word. He will not speak and make you do stuff that is against his word. You need to know that that's not the spirit of God. That's something else. So that was James 1, 17. I now re- laughed. I'm going to read it all, even though I'm not using it. But I'm just telling you how he rebuked that thing that was saying, are you sure it's God that gave you with a scripture? It says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and coming down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variables, variableness, neither shadows of turning. Meaning he doesn't change, he doesn't change, he doesn't shift like he's, God is God. And if, and I was just telling my mother, I said, mommy, do you know when we have good things, we have to always appreciate God for it. Even though maybe you didn't pray, but you still got a good gift. It's still God that gave you, or who are you going to give the credit to? You give it to God, right? Do you see what I'm saying? Maybe you never had it as a prayer point, but you received something good in your life. It's still God that will go take the credit. You can't say, oh, that's my best friend. She did it. That's fine. But thank you, Lord, for using my best friend to give me this gift. This is how it should go. Do you see where I'm coming from? The Spirit teaches me a lot. I learned this today. But now the first scripture that he gave me was Luke 8, 17. It says, for nothing is in a secret that shall not be made manifest. Neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. Meaning, if you are not a doer, privately, you are somebody else in the secret place. It will not be forever hidden. (laughs) One day, (laughs) it will come out. (laughs) Or maybe somebody that caught you privately one day will not keep their mouth shut (laughs) because their body will be doing them somehow. They can't. Or let's say you are a, a, a person that maybe a woman of God that you preach a lot about against fornication, but privately you like to have boyfriends. One of the boyfriends ain't going to keep his mouth shut. Probably he will even have a camera to record you. And one day you will go on Facebook. You will see yourself on video. It will definitely come out one day. Do you see what I'm saying? He was just telling me that people think when they are doing things in the private, they think they are actually hiding. (laughs) One day it will be made open. Even you yourself may be the one to expose yourself one day. Whatever you do, if you like, enter this private place, lock yourself and do something real quick and come out. God is everywhere. He knows. He sees. Where can you go and hide from him? Nowhere. So that was the first scripture he gave me. I said, yeah, that's true. That's true. I was like, okay. And then the next one he gave me, Jesus, James 1, to 25. He says, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So when you're not doing it, you think you're deceiving God or the people you're preaching to, you are actually deceiving yourself. When you're not living like Jesus or you think you're fooling your congregation it is yourself you are fooling because some of your congregation have this gift of discernment of spirit they already know but they're just not saying anything yet you heard what this man of God said when he came he says when he goes somewhere he knows because he has that gift so you may be doing something thinking nobody knows but someone in the crowd already fished you out but they're quiet then I say anything. It doesn't mean that you are hiding properly. It just means maybe they are not ready to speak up about it yet. That's what I'm saying. If you just leave and act like Jesus every time, there will be nothing to hide. Your life will be like an open book. Even if people accuse you wrongly, you won't need to defend yourself. 
God will defend you. But how can God defend you when you yourself you are not innocent? Do you see what I'm saying? That's why some men of God, when people try to bring them down, they accuse them of being with people or doing this or doing that. Sometimes the ones that are innocent, God turns it around for their good. And that thing turns out to make them even more famous. Like a man of God that nobody knew before. Suddenly, because of the scandal that they framed up against him, he became famous from it. And the people started to confess. Oh, we were paid money to do it like this. But if that person's hand is really not clean, and maybe there's some kind of truth to it, it could end his ministry. And he may never come out in public anymore. Do you see what I'm saying? Just be like Jesus. Be like Jesus. Not for people, for yourself. Not to show off to people, but for God to be pleased. For you to live like Jesus. God told me one day, he said, he wants people that are ready to serve him and just be like Jesus. It is so hard to find somebody that is like Jesus. He said it because the devil always tries to tempt God's children. See, when you are anointed and you're doing the work of God, if before you were anointed, you had 10 demons tempting you, the moment you become anointed, there will be like 1 million demons. <laughs> the number will... <laughs> it's men of God, women of God, they have more temptation than ordinary people. That's why you always have to pray for your men of God or somebody you love that is doing the work of God because while people are celebrating them, there's a big gathering of people trying to bring them down. Make them to not be like Jesus in any way. That When they see they're even getting so close to being like Jesus, sometimes it could even be the people walking with them that will even cause them to fall. Because they don't want God to be happy. And they don't want that person to go to heaven. So that's why I was begging God that I need his help to be like Jesus. That's what the spirit of God is in here with us for. To help us be like Jesus. To teach us. But sometimes we still need to beg God to help us. Because it's not easy. In this world that's full of temptation. Temptation. Sometimes... It could be love. You go and love somebody. You have a soft spot for somebody. A lot of men of God and women of God go down because they fall in love with somebody that also may be a man of God or woman of God, but that person has already been given to the devil somehow. And that person is a cause for their downfall. And they have a soft spot for that person. When God gives them messages because that person said something else and they love that person, you see the anointing going down small, small because they're in love with somebody. So it comes different ways. So you see why it's so hard to be like Jesus? That's why I was saying, I just want to be like him everywhere. Not just when I'm holding the mic. I even want my son to see me privately and say, Mommy, do you know you are like Jesus? If a child can tell me that, <laughs> that means <laughs> I've really done a good job. Because <laughs> children, know, see, you think they don't know, they see things, they know things. Sometimes they are quiet doing like they are doing something on their own. They see everything you are doing. Even your text message, your phone call. <laughs> your children, they are not as, as not, I won't call them dumb, as not smart. Sometimes you say, she's just a baby. She doesn't know. Eh. They can memorize word for word what you said sometimes. Don't take them for granted though. Hey. So if your child can say, mommy, do you know, when I read about Jesus, I think about you. You're just like Jesus, mommy. You will start to cry. Because for a child to notice that, it means, because he lives with you in the house, he sees you in the house. And for him to say that. So that's the kind of thing I want. For people in the house to, like my mother should come out and say, what you see with Belema is what you get inside. I'm not just saying it because she's my daughter. I'm saying it because I know for a fact. So I'm going to read the scripture, James 1, 25. I'm reading King James. 
He said, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like unto a man beholding his nat natural face in a, in a glass, it's like in a mirror. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgeteth what manner of man he was. You know how you look at yourself? Like me, I look at myself before I came out. You know, I'm fine now. I admired myself, you know what I'm saying? But I don't remember how I look. I still know I look somehow, but I don't remember it the way it was. That's how it is when you don't do the word of, you don't do it, you just hear. And then he said, sorry, I'm trying to read. He says, but whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. God blesses people that live the life. Not just people that preach the life or talk the life. People that do his will. People that obey him. People that obey Jesus. People that want to be like Jesus. He will fight for them. Oh, trust me, he will fight for them. I told you how when I first started preaching, a girl was, she confessed to me. Some of you know this story. That she has been condemning me for some days she's never met me she said somebody she was living with told her i'm a bad person that person never met me too i don't know where they got the stories from but god told her you need to stop that's my daughter in fact you need to go and apologize to her and make sure she forgives you i'm doing the will of my father and you are here trying to condemn me you're here trying to bring me down God fights for me because I'm a doer of his will. She messaged me. She said, please, just tell me you forgive me and I'll be happy. I said, you are forgiven. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when you are like Jesus, it doesn't matter who is trying to fight you. Jesus didn't worry about that. Did he worry? Even he got to a point when they were trying to push him off somewhere and they, the Bible says he passed through them or something how do you think he passed through them a bunch of people all of you now get up and try to gather me and push me only me one person all of you a crowd and I passed through you that means I probably disappeared into your body because Jesus I don't think he has six pack or muscles so none of that you know what I mean but he supernaturally escaped that's what somebody that do it the work of God, the will of God. That's the kind of power that you get. Even when they have guns pointed at you. My mentor was telling us in church the other day that people shot at him a few weeks ago. And the gun, nothing entered his body and they ran away at the gas station. Do you understand? What if he wasn't doing God's will? What if he was full of sin, iniquity? Maybe he would have died that night. Do you see what I'm saying? So why wouldn't you want to be like Jesus? And the next scripture he gave me. Matthew 7, 21 to 27. It says, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that do it, did you hear that? Do it. The will of my Father, which is in heaven. He didn't say he that hear it. He says he that do it. So, <laughs> you can just hear the word, but you're not doing it. You ain't going to make heaven. He just kept taking me to do it, do it things. I was on fire. You know when the scriptures keep downloading, I just write them. I'm just happy. It's like you ask him a question and he's like, okay, are you ready for the answer? Get your pen and paper ready. Scriptures are just coming to me like that. That's how God works with his children. If God really called you to do, the, to, to do his work, you never have to struggle for messages. He was telling me today, he said, my daughter, do you know you can preach 10 times a day? And I'll give you 10 different messages a day. There's a lot to preach about in that Bible. 
But if you're a man of God, woman of God, and you're always struggling for messages, maybe you're not hearing from God anymore. Because if you constantly hear from God, you will always have messages. Sometimes tell, mommy, don't I bother you sometimes? I say, I need to preach to you. Today I was preaching to my son. I said, come here, let me preach to you. I needed to release. I'm always having messages to preach. And you will know it's from God because he gives you scriptures to back up what he's saying. So people take weeks to research one message just for, like they want to give a message and they will research, research. They print out a lot of papers, pages and pages. And you, when you see them even delivering it, there's this, it's so mechanical. It's like, you could just tell that they're struggling. They're trying to even, trying hard to even connect with the crowd. And then maybe one page of paper will fl fly to the ground. Oh, they don't know where they stopped anymore. It's like it just confused their whole thought. No, but when you are led by the Spirit of God, you may even just be invited to just say one short prayer. And when God starts to speak, you will give a sermon that even everybody will be like, wow. Even you yourself, you didn't know when you were getting up from that chair, you were about to say that thing that you just said. You will go back and watch it and listen and say, <laughs> how did this happen that's how God speaks to us and I'm glad that oh, I'm so glad because how would I have been able to do this work of God how will God tell me yesterday evening do a fellowship today and I'm like I don't have a message and up to now I'm waiting what is the message I don't have to worry it makes it so easy when I used to be a party promoter I used to bring celebrities from Africa and all that it was hard. I would look for money to pay them. I would be worried some of them will show or not. I would, it was too much, too much. But we got, I don't even worry about dressing. He, it's so easy. I don't buy these long, long dresses that hide my big belly and everything. I all wait and I'm out. You can't see no belly. I don't worry about nothing. See, I took up my shoe. Where's my shoe? Somewhere there. The main thing here is the message. Do you see where I'm coming from? You will remember the message because it came from God. And by the time the message is done, you will be convicted in your heart that you need to start being a doer. You need to start living like Jesus both privately and publicly. You want to change because it came straight from heaven. You will know that God is speaking to you. Oh, the confirmation, this message is for me. Yes, you're talking to me. That's how you know because he gave you the message so he will make sure the Spirit of God is convicting you because the message came from Him. I'm just a mouthpiece. He's just speaking through me. So He does the work of touching your heart to make you know that you are guilty, you are innocent, or you need to do a little more work. It says, Not every man that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in the name? And in thy name have cast out devils? Oh, do you know this part is so tricky? You can come online and you see somebody prophesy. Oh, this man of God is powerful. Oh, hey, he will make heaven. Oh, Jay. This man of God just cast demons out. He will make heaven. But Jesus is saying here that that's not a guarantee. Because maybe they're not doing the will of God. See, God has already given them the gift, right? <laughs> There's some people, God has stopped speaking to them, but they still have the gift of maybe healing or whatever. He still left the gift for them, right? But God and them have not even had a good conversation in a while. <laughs> but they are still using the gift that God gave them. So you, you will be thinking, ah, this guy, this guy is definitely making heaven. And sometimes they'll be telling you things that even you, you know, is contradicting or something that is not working with what the Bible is saying. Well, because of all the miracles they're doing, because of all the prophecies they're giving, because of all the spirits they're casting out, you are like, well, God must be really using him. Otherwise, how is he able to say all these things? Maybe what he's saying to me now is the truth. I'll just do what he says. No, 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 no. You could still be doing all these things and Jesus may still not know you. That's what he says here. He says, many will say to me that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? 
and then I will profess, I, I profess unto them, I never knew you. Hey, but your church taught you and Jesus were buddy buddy. Because in church you act like Jesus. But in private, you don't act like Jesus. And Jesus doesn't even know you. But the publicly, the public you <laughs> acts or pretends or fakes like Jesus. But Jesus is saying, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth the sayings of mine and do it them. Do you hear the word do again? Come in here. I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock meaning when you do his work when you are doing what he's told you no amount of people that try to pull you down can succeed because you are founded on a solid rock they will not be able to bring down your ministry they will not be able to succeed in framing you do you understand what i just said like the example i gave instead what they do will make you go to the next level this is not just for ministry even in your job people will gang up against you and because you are a doer of god's will it turns out that you end up getting a promotion from it and the people that ganged up got fired but if you are not a doer you are full of sin possibly they might fire you and maybe give you a bad reputation and other companies may not want to hire you it may not be something you did it may be a frame up but basically you're on your own that's what it means who likes that kind of life he says And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. You know the sand is not solid. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. So if you're not like Jesus privately and publicly, you are not doing what you are preaching don't be surprised when you fall don't say oh my enemies have attacked me oh haters everywhere no it's not haters check yourself all the things you're doing are catching up with you your fake life <laughs> it's nobody it's you when he was giving me all the scriptures I was screaming I was like yes 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 so you can see so many people of God preaching doing things doing things a lot of them Jesus says he doesn't know them doesn't that scare you you are trying to be like a man of God you want this person as your mentor and Jesus is saying they don't know that mentor doesn't that scare you and you want to do everything your mentor tells you but Jesus is saying I don't know him doesn't that scare you? Because of course you want to follow somebody that knows Jesus and Jesus knows them. Somebody that if you catch them unawares, what they are telling you or what they are preaching is what they're doing. How many of you will actually continue going to a church if you unexpectedly maybe go to a hotel and open a room by accident thinking it was your room and you see your pastor with one of the choir ladies on the bed doing the thing would you go back to that church your mentor doing that it will crush you it will even make you wonder <laughs> you will start questioning your faith how is this man able to do all these signs and wonders and he lives in sin like you will be troubled you may even backslide though that day you may even be so worried that you will go and buy one big liquor and drink yourself in fact something may happen to you that day that will make you not want to go to church for some weeks do you see what i'm saying we have to be people that even if our members 
surprisingly catch us in another country or somewhere. They can still watch us. Let me see what pastor is doing. Maybe you're saying it out of, I want to see what she's doing. And then boom, you see him and somebody kissing, hugging. He, pastor, that's not your wife. You see what I'm saying? We have to be doers. We have to be like Jesus everywhere. Because you may think nobody's watching. Not just God that is watching. People are watching. Eyes are watching. Even the devil is watching you. And he's laughing at you. The devil is always watching. Uh, sometimes you may be trying to cast out a demon. And the demon will start to manifest. And say, you that sleep with the demon may even mention the name of the person you sleep with. <laughs> you that sleep with that. Did I not see you going to that hotel? Do you know demons can say these things? And it will take you off guard. And because you know he's telling the truth, fear may grip you and that demon may possess you. Because you know they, 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 they walk with fear. You may not be able to cast him again because you're like shocked. And before you know, the demon has overpowered you. Demons knew Jesus, who he was. You forgot? When the people did not know what Jesus was, whenever he walked into a place, it was the demons that said, why? Have you come to, to, to torment us before our time? Please, okay, put us in the pigs or whatever, the swine or something. They always knew who he was. He tells them, shut up. Don't speak. So demons know what you do. The devil knows what you do. He will use it against you. Maybe it's not even God that will, that, will, that will deal with you on it. It may even be the devil that will use that thing you are doing in your private to finish you, to mock you. Yeah, you're coming here to preach. Look at you. Just yesterday you were. And you may not stop the, the, the demon from manifesting immediately. Before you know, the whole church has heard everything. You may say, don't mind what they are saying, but some people will say, you know, some members will be like, this thing may be true. <laughs> even if it's a demon that said it. It will scatter your church. And it wasn't God that did that. It was the devil. Nothing that is hidden that will stay dead. One day, one day, it will come out. One way or the other. But if you are like Jesus in and out, you know, in fact, you want things to come out. Because if it comes out, it will bring more souls to Jesus. Because if they say, wow, this is how she lives privately. Oh, I'm so glad she's my mentor. I'm so glad. Oh my God. Oh, I'm so glad God brought me to her. Some people will be like, if this is how she does, then she truly is a woman of God. I need to follow her more. Do you see where I'm coming from? So you will not be worried if they come and search your house. I have nothing to hide. But if there's something you're doing that is not good, you are too secret and private about things. In fact, you don't even want anybody touching your phone sometimes. Like, there's just something about you. are always hiding something. Like, you're too protective of things. Like, there has to be something that's not right. But if you're just open like that, search me, do whatever. I'm good. Do you get what I'm telling you? This doesn't just apply to people only. It applies to even us, me. I can't be coming here doing Holy Ghost Fellowship, speaking in tongue, ba 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 da 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 doing all these things. Then when I go home from here, I'm doing something that is not right. Who am I fooling? You guys? If I die that night, what, what do you guys care? I'm the one that will go to hell, right? Who are we fooling? That's why you see why I was telling God, I really want to be like Jesus. In and out. Not just out when I'm preaching to them. Unawares, they should take me unawares. I still want to be like him. In fact, I want to be like him even privately more than publicly. God loves it when we make such requests, you know that? Because he sees that you truly love him. He sees that you're really wanting to, to be like him. Who do you think Jesus was like? God. So if you're being like Jesus, you're like God. Right? He says, I am my father, we are one, right? 
It's not always about asking for things from God. We have to show him that we want to be good. We want to be good, not for sure, not for people to give us credit, but for him to be pleased with us. It's a personal relationship. One on one. Once you try to be like Jesus, you walk like Jesus, you act like Jesus, you do like Jesus, you will be able to perform signs and wonders and miracles and all of that like Jesus. And he even said it in the Bible that you can do greater things than he did. Right? Therefore, whosoever hear these sayings, sorry, I, I, I don't know. I cry. I'm not really the one crying. I think it's the spirit of God in me that makes me cry. He says, "Therefore, whosoever hear these sayings of mine and do it them, I will liken him." Wait, hold on. Let me see where did I stop. Okay, yes. It's still similar to that one. If you notice. Did I read that part already? Oh, I've already finished reading it, right? Matthew 21 to 27. Where am I? No, I was in Matthew... No, no, I was in um I was in Matthew 7 21 to 27, right? Oh, okay. Sorry, I passed, I read more. My bad, people. Forgive me. I was just writing all the scripture. You can see that I just got this <laughs> less than an hour before I came here. <laughs> oh my god, I'm sorry guys. Oh god, this is like <laughs> oh Jesus, thank you, Lord. Yeah, I was right. Matthew 20, um, 7, 21 to 27. I still, I've, I've read it already. Now, the next scripture he gave me after that was Matthew 12, 46 to 50. He said, while he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him and said unto them and told them. He said unto him that told him, Who is my mother? And who are my brethren within my brothers? And he stretched forth his hand towards his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. The people, his disciples, the followers. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. So it doesn't matter if they are brothers and sisters biologically. As long as they are not doing the will of God, he still doesn't know them. There's no favoritism here. Oh, yes, you, you gave birth to me, mommy, I know, but if you ain't doing my father's will, I still don't know you, mommy. We could be living in the same house, eating. Do you see how these scriptures are connecting? I was like, wow. Wow. God is a just God. He wouldn't say, well... Because you gave birth to Jesus, I can exclude you. You can do some bad things and I will still let you in because 
you are in the book now, you're in the Bible, you know, you made history, I'll just... <laughs> the same rule applies to you too, that is Jesus' mother. You must do the will of God. Otherwise, even you too, God does not know you. Even Jesus, if Jesus has not done the will of his father, God will still have said, I don't know you. Do you think God will say, well, let me just forgive Jesus is my only begot? No, 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 no. God doesn't dwell where there is sin. To tell you that God doesn't dwell where there is sin, when Jesus was on the cross, when he carried all of our sin on the cross, why did Jesus say, my father, why have thou forsaken me? Why do you think he said that? Because at that point, God wasn't there with him because he had the sin of the whole world with him. Why do you think Jesus said, why have thou forsaken me? Have you thought about that? Why would Jesus say that? Why had thou forsaken me? At that point, he was carrying the sin of the world. And God did not, it, it, it can't be with their sin. It doesn't matter where you are. He wasn't carrying his own sin. It was because of us he died. Remember? He said, why have thou forsaken me? Because God cannot do what will make him not to be God. It may hurt him. He may love you so much and give you all the anointing and all the spiritual gifts. But when you are not the doer of what he wants you to do, it will hurt him. He will weep for you. But he will, he will not dwell where you are with that sin. He will give you warnings to come back. But don't think you're so special that God will pardon you. I will keep sinning. God, his grace is sufficient. You know, people use this grace thing and they use it as a license to sin. Like, you know, like God's grace is, there's a way they quote it to favor them when they're doing something bad. Are you thinking God is a fool? Are you, are you trying to mock him? If you were God, would you even be as forgiving as he is? Some of us, in one day, we ask for forgiveness more than five times. The same thing we say we won't do yesterday, we find ourselves doing it today. He will still forgive us. Two days from there, we will do it. He will still forgive us. If we had a log of how many times we've sinned since we were born till now, if you were God, you would have killed that child a long time ago. <laughs> you would say, you know what? Um, you're not the child I have here. Your problem is too much. It's enough. I am out. Me, if I was God, I'm still working to be like Jesus, but let me just talk about me without Jesus. The way I would beat that child there, in fact, I would just go and sign the legal document and I hand that child over to something. I'm just being real. And all he's asking us is to do his will. To do what he tells us to do. To, to believe in Jesus. To live like Jesus. To be like Jesus. Privately and publicly. Despite all the things we have done. He's only asking for this thing. He didn't say give me money. He didn't say give me house. What can we give God? The other day he was telling me to tell you guys. That all he wants is your love. Truly. That's all you can give him. Because that's one thing he can't force and take. He has everything but he doesn't have your love. That's something that you have to give him. Why do you think it's the first commandment? To love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, your strength. Do you know what it means to love? When you love him like that, you become doers of what he wants you to do. It's only when you love your husband so much that you do everything your husband says you should do. Because you love him. If you don't love somebody or maybe an ex-boyfriend you used to date comes tell you to do something, you're like, I'm not doing that. Because then you loved him, you were doing things he told you, but now you're like, um, sorry, you're talking to the wrong person. But your husband, sometimes if you tell you not to go to church because you love your husband so much, okay, baby, I'll stay home with you today. A lot of people have stopped going to church because of the people they married. They, they listen to those people more than they listen to God, and they call it love. So imagine loving God. You will not do the things that he doesn't want you to do. 
you would, you would, you, in fact, you won't even want to hear somebody that is talking about you. Will rebuke them. You will quickly rebuke that devil and say, you know what, get away from me. But if you don't love him, you will entertain the thought, and then you will, met, you will think about it before you know you are doing it. So basically, it's okay for me to say that when people sin and do evil things, they love the devil. I can say that really because they do things to please the devil so I can say I can actually tell a sinner you are in love with the devil and I'm like no God forbid I hate Satan I don't love him so why are you doing things to please him it's only people you love that you do things to please them he said what am I doing to please the devil fornication it pleases the devil eh, but that doesn't mean I love him <laughs> but what's your the life you're living now is making him happy it's just the same with it. when you're living a life to make God happy. You're pleasing God, meaning you love God, right? So if you're doing things opposite, that God doesn't like, you are pleasing the person that hates God. You love that person. When you put it like that, they'll be like, so I love the devil and I don't even know. I don't know how I'm saying what I'm saying. No. It's the spirit of God in me that is speaking. So it's not, if somebody said, somebody sees you that you're always committing sin and they say you love the devil that's why you please him don't get offended because that's the fact until one day you're like you know what this relationship with me and you this stupid satan today there's a divorce i'm not coming back here and you cross over to the side where you want to please god and be like jesus privately and publicly that's when you can you can see I love the Lord that made it all. Oh, I love the Lord that made it all. Oh, I love the Lord that made it all. Oh, I love the Lord that made it all. Teach me this song in my dream. The very first encounter I had with God, I always asked myself, he could have taught me another song. Why does it have to be this one? You shall love the Lord that made it all. You shall love the Lord that made at all you shall love the Lord that make it all you shall love the Lord that make it all how can we boldly sing this song when we don't love him now that I've explained what it means to love him it's by doing the will of God or re hearing and also doing it right so when you are singing this song ask yourself am I the, a doer of the word if I'm not a doer I don't think I can sing this song <laughs> I can't really say I love the Lord you are deceiving yourself you sing and you start to cry you are in the spirit but deep down in your heart you just slept with somebody that is not your husband God is not here to judge. I know that the reason he wanted me to do this was to give this message. He's over there giving me a round of applause right now for giving this message because it's a timely message. A lot of believers live two different lives or three different lives. In church, there's somebody else. In their house, there's somebody else. At their workplace, there's somebody else. In the club, there's somebody else. They have different, oh, trust me, they have a lot. Of, he wants you to be like one person only, which is Jesus. Every single place you go, church, work, house. Even if you go to the club, 
Jesus was partying with the sinners. You forgot in the Bible, he was partying with them. He came and ate with them, right? And one lady was using her tears to wipe his legs and her hair. And they said, why does, your, why does he dine and wine with publicans and sinners? Why is it, if he knew that lady was a sinner, he would not let her be massaging his feet. He said, I came here for them. So even though he went to dine with them, he did not change who he was. He still maintained to be Jesus. The man that is full of love. So you can go to that party, but are you going to be the one in the party dancing the most? Or are you going to be the one in the party that will represent Jesus? Where people will be drawn to you. People want to be nice to you. There is just something about you that is dragging people to you. People want to wash your feet with their tears. People want to surround you before you know you are talking about God. Before you know they came to party, but they are repenting. Or are you going to be the lady that, ooh, thank God there's no church today. Ooh, I got a party. And then when they see you in church, hallelujah. I don't know how I'm giving this message. This is not me speaking. But this is the truth. Be one person. Be like Jesus. Inside. Outside. Everywhere. That's only when God will be pleased with you. John 4 34 says, Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. My meat is to do the will of him that said, Do you not have no eating for days? Yesterday I went to preach at an odd place. I gave a message on Facebook yesterday about this. How I went to preach somewhere. They had so much food, but I didn't touch their food because I was full already. I had preached to the people at the, it was a celebration of life, like somebody died anyway. And all of them, my mother was there, everybody gave their lives to God, almost 40 something people. And I was full because I was doing the will of my father. I did not eat the kind of food they had. My mother kept saying, mm, mm, the food is good. She sat right next to me. She said, mm, this food is good. I said, mommy, I've heard. Because you know I love food. This woman was tempting me. She's right here. She brought the plate close to me. They have moi moi. The, even the man was like, don't you want something? You keep giving me water to drink. I kept hearing, man shall not live by bread alone. I said, thank you, Lord. Keep reminding me. Keep reminding me. Because I got full when I came to a place where they are mourning the dead and everybody repented. People coming to me. My mother was there. People were coming, giving me number, telling me they felt chills throughout the preaching. They're telling me they want to. I got full. Doing the will of God can actually fill you up. Do you know why some people cannot fast? Because during the time they are fasting, they're not even doing the will of God. They're not doing the things of God. They are fasting and they want to watch a movie. They are fasting and they want to hang out with girls to talk. How can you fast? If you keep yourself in the will of God, doing what pleases him, that fasting will. How do you think Jesus fasted 40 days, 40 nights? Jesus always stayed doing the will of his daddy. That's why he was able to fast that long, 40 days, 40. Do you know you will not die if you did 40 days, 40 nights? Even God sees you. Sometimes, ask my mother, I feel like somebody gave me food to eat. Remember when we were doing the fasting, the first, first time I started doing fasting? One day I told you guys that God is going to feed us today. I told you guys to put oil inside water. And I'm blessed. All of you drank. You were there. You were there. Everybody became full. We did seven days, no food. These ladies were there. No food. Some of them have never done two days, no food before. We did seven days, right? That was a powerful fasting. A lot of people receive the gift of prophecy, healing and stuff. He fed us daily with the word. We were preaching. We were preaching, praying in tongues. 
we were even given food we were drinking water in your eyes it was like water right but it was not water when he entered your belly it turned to food <laughs> so doing the will of God has a lot of benefits you could fast for 40 days and be in the will of God and you won't have none of those ulcer that people are scared of you know how sometimes they'll say oh your kidney will shut down or your liver will shut down or something like you will go to the doctor and check up and they'll say you're perfectly fine because God told you to do it God was with you all the way he's the one that made you right or you can fast to, to show that hey I can be like Jesus publicly for clap for show to boast do you know what I've done to get to where I am do you know how many days I fasted to get to where I am I heard that a man of God in Africa fasted 40 days 40 nights and came and drank coke and just died I was laughing I'm sorry but I had to laugh it was kind of funny because probably he fasted for show for him to be recognized that he did what Jesus did not to the glory of God not because he wanted to be like Jesus but because he wanted to be respected by people that he took go do what Jesus did but privately his intentions were not to be like Jesus it's just for people to respect him and see that he too He's a powerful man of God. The motive behind the fast is to please man, not God. Otherwise, God would have saved him. Do you get where I'm coming from? Meaning he fasted 40 days and Jesus did not know him. Who was he praying to 40 days that he was fasting? He was pretty much starving a weight loss treatment not fasting I don't know how all these things are downloading to my head but I'm speaking he said my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work he was not just preaching it to people it was as serious as being food to him that when he met that lady in that place at the well and he was talking to the lady that, I could, let's say that well was a club that he went to because the well is not a church right it was an odd place let's say the well where he met the Samaritan lady was a club and maybe she was a bartender and maybe she had she had married five times maybe she even had mini skirt he had a good conversation with the woman but he did not make him lose who he was he still knew who was Jesus he did not openly say I'm a prophet I'm this and that after he got comfortable chatting with the lady that's when he revealed himself to her and that's when he he, he he told her that yes it's true you're not married he didn't just come out and say not some professor you are currently in a man's house and it's not your husband you need to repent you are they just want to show that they can see things they can see vision so the woman will be like hey how did you know that no Jesus knew but he said go get your husband she said but I'm not married he said oh yes it's true you're not you have been married five times and the one you're with is not she said how do you know it seems like you're a prophet do you see the approach I'm saying that place was a club Jesus was chatting with her not as a pastor as a man that just came to an odd place like a club but he was chatting with her not losing himself not not falling into sin with her he was still in line with God's will that's the Jesus that I want to be like so so that if people come and see me in a club hanging with people they will not say eh that evangelist is always in the club oh. they will see that my going to the club made a difference my going to the club made everybody there know that I'm spirit filled at the end of the day my going to the club won at least 20 souls from there I didn't lose myself and heard one music and started dancing giving them the you know like showing them all the good steps that I had even if I had to dance like that at the end of the day somebody has to repent so I'm not saying that you should not hang with people but anywhere you go still be like Jesus don't say well I'm in a foreign country nobody knows I'm a pastor here with Facebook the way I preach there's no way I'll go that people will not know I'm 
Somebody must know me, especially if I wear one of my big wigs. I may go to a restaurant thinking nobody knows me. Somebody may just walk up to me. Hi, I watch your videos. Just like one day, I went to one African restaurant to go eat. And they were playing party songs. The sign that I used to play when I used to do parties. Man, the beats were so good. Sha! Jesus, I was eating food in the party, in, in the restaurant. And they were playing this. I was like, this song is sweet though. Hey, chai, this song is sweet though. Hey, you know, and I was eating my fufu. At the point, I was like, chai, this thing is sweet though. You don't take, you don't take a person dance like this. You don't take, why dance like this? And I was thinking nobody knew me. Of course, my thoughts were still pure, but ha, the song sweet. Let me not lie. Not knowing that the table next to me, the woman, her husband and her kids, when they finished eating, they were about to leave. She said, hi, evangelist. I've been so blessed by your videos. I said, um, um, you, you know me? <laughs> he said, yeah, I watch you a lot. I said, okay, okay, God bless you. I said, hey, okay, okay, God bless you. I said, Chai, what if I came here with a boyfriend or something? And the woman didn't say she knew me when I was grooving or it was when she was about to leave. She said, I've been so blessed by your videos. I even told you guys on the video. I'm sure God was even laughing too. I told you, be careful when you go outside. That's probably what God is saying. Be careful when you go outside. You think they don't know you. Do you know how many, one of my videos has 300 and... 40 something thousand views that person could have been your neighbor watching it too <laughs> your neighbor may not even talk to you but they are watching you on facebook they don't greet you in the morning when they see you but they're on your page watching your video even some people that you think are your haters they stay on your page 24 7 watching you and you're like no that person doesn't know i preach sometimes when you enter a place people are looking to see how you will act people you didn't think know you they are studying, but hey, let's see today if she's really what she's telling all these people on Facebook. And you, you are looking at the faces. I don't see Shari. I don't see my mother. I don't see Bimbo. I don't see Temi. Oh, okay, I'm safe. I'm safe. I'm safe. Oh, yeah, let's do this thing. Let's do this thing. Come on. But there are people that you don't know that are there. They may even take pictures. They may do videos. You know, these days they do a lot of videos. Hey, this is every small thing, even fighting on the street. They do video and post it. People may be recording, you're not even knowing they're recording you. And they'll say, look at this evangelist. And they post it. And all your viewers, somehow they will see it. I don't know how your viewers will see but you better believe it. They will be viral. In fact, you know bad news spreads fast. Without being paid to promote it, it will just spread. The devil will give them ideas on how to share it. And you are done. You are not a doer of what you're preaching. You are not acting like Jesus. It says my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work that's how bad it is for me that it's something that it even affects my food affects my drink it, it, it's just it's just so much that I can't mess with the will of my father I have to do it and I have to lead a good example why do we want to be like him if he wasn't a good example we want to be like him John 6 29 says Jesus answered and said unto them this is the work of God that ye believe on him whom he has sent so when he's saying he won't my his weak is his will is to do the work of God and and to finish the, the work of God he took me to a place he said because I was like so what is the work of God and he said this is the work of God that we should believe in him Jesus right so he came here to make people believe in him that he is the son of God right not everybody believed some believed right so he stayed steadily trying to do that work until he was crucified a lot more people believed after he died but that was his meat that was his work what is your meat what is your work to do what to be like Jesus to believe in Jesus to be a doer of the word hearing it you can hear this now and you go and sleep it will come out from your other ear but you can hear it and say you know what this really spoke to me 
I really need to work on myself. Who am I fooling? I really want to be like Jesus. Then this message has really worked. Otherwise, if you let it pass through your other ear, then you're still not a doer yet. Jesus doesn't know you yet. And you'll be crying and calling him, Lord Jesus! Like my friend here will call him. And he's like, who is calling me? I don't know her. I don't know her. And the final scripture that I have. John 6, 38 to 40. He says, for I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. Me, you, all of us, we didn't come here to live life like we please. But to live life to please God will brought us here. You think you came here to live like what your mind is telling you? No. You came here to live and do the will of your father that sent you. He says, and this is the father's will which had sent me that of all which he had given me, I shall lose nothing but she raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. So my question for you, do you want to have everlasting life? Do you want to be raised up on the last day? day or are you concerned about the short period you have here on earth to show off a flashy lifestyle to show off anointing oh I'm anointed I can lay hands on people and they can fall or do you want everlasting life do you want Jesus to raise you up he doesn't want to lose anybody do you want to be among those people or do you want to be lost how can you be raised up on the last day? How can you have everlasting life when you are not a doer of the word? How can you have everlasting life when you are not like Jesus? The people he will raise are people that succeeded to be like him. That succeeded to do the will of his father. That succeeded in allowing the Holy Spirit lead them in everything they do. This message came from God. God will give you things that you need. But God is more concerned about your soul being saved. He's more concerned about you having everlasting life because he loves you. And that's why he sent Jesus to come die in the first place. Or you think it was just for show for Jesus to come die? For you to have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And Jesus came so you can believe in him. He was given so you can believe in him. If you believe in him, you will do and obey his commandments. Right? But if you're not obeying his commandments, you are not doing things to please him, then you don't believe in him. You believe in the devil because he's the voice that talked to you that made you go commit that fornication. And you believe that voice, that's why you found yourself fornicating. If you had believed in Jesus, which is the Holy Spirit, saying, no, don't fornicate. It gives you scriptures in the Bible saying why you shouldn't fornicate. If you believe that voice, you will have everlasting life. But when you sin, 
is the other voice that you believe not the stupid voice the devil will give you reasons why you should do it God will give you scriptures why you shouldn't do it the devil will give you reasons why you should God will give you scriptures to back it up why you shouldn't proof the devil has no proof he just has stories that he made lies false promises oh that guy would love you he'll marry you you sleep with him the guy don't want to call you no more that was a lie he lied to you <laughs> but if God tells you don't fornicate don't do any sexual sin because you will grieve the Holy Spirit that's a fact because when you do it you grieve the Holy Spirit for fact not a lie God gives you scriptures and they become fact the devil gives you lies and promises and false hopes and they hurt you and you begin to cry I was deceived I shouldn't have listened if I had known you can never say you were deceived with God I have never been deceived since I answered the calling to do what he sent me to do I have never failed I've never failed and I will never fail today he said if he's if he's with me nobody can be against me if if the devil is with you everybody will be against you and the devil will be the one laughing at you foolish girl why did you even do that he told you to do it but when they start blaming you you say but you too why did you do that don't you see that that thing you did is bad but but I thought shut up don't you know the same devil is the one causing you you guys know this because you've been in situations where you thought what you were doing was right they say there's a way that seemed right right unto a man but the end what like <laughs> the Bible is like a living word if you're filled with the Holy Ghost sometimes there was one day I was angry at somebody and it was about almost 12 midnight and I was gonna sleep the Holy Spirit says do not let the Sun go down while you're still angry or something like that. there's a scripture like that I was hearing it play in my like you know when Spirit of God is giving you <laughs> a scripture it's like somebody is reading it in your head I had to get my phone and look for my Bible when I read it, I had conviction in my heart that it's time for me to forgive this person. But the devil, don't mind him. He doesn't like you. Keep being mad at him. You will see why you should be mad at him. Tomorrow you will see. Tomorrow nothing will happen. You will still hold my madness and God is not answering your prayers. You're the one blocking your prayers. And then at the end, your prayer is not answered. They say, foolish girl, why do you always hate people, Seth? But you told me that I should be mad at him. And then you will cry and say, Lord, help me. <laughs> Why don't you just stay on his side all the way and be like Jesus? I just want to say thank you, Lord, for this message. I am not here to please man. I am here to do the will of my God, my Father that sent me, that called me to be what I am right now the messages that I give you they are downloaded from heaven to make people change I have prayed for a lot of you both online and you have received miracles miracle money healing people are pregnant that have never been pregnant I prayed witches have died you guys have come and told about our witch died I prayed people have seen voodoo uprooting their compound but at the end of the day the most important message is to do the will of God to be a believer to be saved salvation we get carried away with all this money money prayers money money preaching you will get a house your life will change this that the most important do you know what John the Baptist was preaching about repent for the kingdom of God is near or is at hand do you know what Jesus's message was the same message repent but these days 
Some people don't like to hear repent. Please pray for me. Let me get miracle money, Joe. Please pray for me. Please pray for me. I won't break through. But you're still living in sin. A lady today, she sent me a prayer request. She has so many requests that she, almost 10 requests. I want God to give me a husband. I want God to bless me like this. I want God to do this. I want God to do this. And God said, ask her for me. Does she love me? Does she spend time with me? I asked her, I said, God says I should ask you this question. She said, yes, go ahead. Do you love God? Do you spend time with him? She said, well, I try. But I need to do better. I said, if you were God, you don't love him, you don't spend time with him, would you grant all this request to somebody that doesn't love you? And she was like, I'm not just someone that prays for people and things happen. I'm someone that does the will of my father. I'm going to tell you the truth. Another lady has come to me saying, men never want to marry her after they promise her all this stuff. And God says, ask her, does she sleep with them? I said, do you sleep with them? She said, yes. He said, tell her that's the problem. That's why they're not marrying her. I said, the man that will marry you will never sleep with you. Are you ready to take that road? Sin-free life, no fornication. Otherwise, the circle will repeat itself. A lot of men have dumped you. You have given them all the style, you know. In fact, the more you gave them styles, the more they run away. Can't you see that it's not working? Some people, they just pray for you. They don't want to know your relationship with God. They don't want to know if you are pure and holy. They just want miracles and testimony. They want you to come back with testimony. No, no, no. That's not the will of God. Jesus Christ was saying, go and sin no more. Jesus Christ was saying, if you sin, a greater one will come upon you. Jesus Christ said, when somebody casts a demon out and the person goes back to their old ways, seven more will come, stronger than the one that was there. So in other words, he healed you, but he gave you a warning. He's telling you, I did you good by healing you, but this is how you should live your life from now on. No more sin. So he wasn't just healing them and telling them to go live in sin. He corrected them. That's the will of my father. So if I'm asking questions when you call me to, or ask me to pray and you're getting offended, I can't help you. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to say, oh, stay with him. Don't worry, keep sinning with him. I will keep praying for you. Who am I praying to? My God that doesn't like sin? Or am I praying and lying to you that I'm praying, but I'm really not praying? No. My God wants you to live right. A lady that I did the same thing to, this lady, when I first started preaching, this was one of the first people that came that wanted to get married desperately. She said, many pastors have even somebody bait her in a river in Nigeria that they took her to one river to bait her because they say she has spirit husband. The spiritual husband is making her not to get married. Men keep dumping her. God told me, that's not true. Ask her, does she sleep with them? She said, Yes. Because in Nigeria, she said, in Nigeria, I said, no, I'm from Nigeria. There are some people that don't sleep with people. Don't say, don't try to generalize it. Because some people, you know how they will want to say, in this country, it's hard. They want to justify something. I said, no, I'm also Nigerian. There are some really born again Christians that stayed without sex and they got married. So don't, don't do that. She said, but you know, it's hard for these days. If men will take care of you and give you money that they won't sleep with you. I said, but you are the one that is desperate that they've bait you in water before. Is that of God? It, it, it was any, it, what are they baiting you that you have spirit husband? So they took you to the river to bait you. Who, who knows what they put inside of you? I said, the only way is to be born again. And God is showing me that you need to be an usher in church. Focus on God. Love him. Be a doer of the word. She said, anything right now, I'm ready. She surrendered her life. She repented. 
she became an usher last month or two months ago she sent me a message she said woman of God God has answered my prayers I have two men that want to marry me nobody has ever proposed to her before in fact they stopped answering her phone calls after they sleep with her there's something that drives them away but she said two men want to marry me one is coming at the end of the month to see my parents and the other one is still trying to fix a date thank you woman of God I love God so much I just want to make sure that I'm making the right decision she said please pray for me tell me which one it is I said have you slept with them she said no I don't sleep with people anymore I prayed and God gave me a name I said okay what is the, what are their names and she mentioned their name and one of the names matched the name I said this is the one that God wants you that he may not have money but you will struggle you will grow with him and you will make it with him but he loves God she said oh my God he's the one that checks on me all the time making sure I go to church he's the one that checks on me every night did you read your Bible that he doesn't have money he's the one coming this month the other one I don't really know him but he's so rich and coming from a poor home I feel I figured a rich person could help the family but I don't know him this one is a childhood friend that I've always had interest in me but we never really dated but he's always checking on me he likes since I gave my life to God he's been particularly interested in me because he loves God I said that's your husband he may not have money now but you are gonna make it together I don't know when they're gonna do the marriage or the wedding maybe she'll send me pictures but do you see the moment she started doing the will of God do you see how her life changed but the devil was feeding her with lies before that she needed to sleep with them do all these things with them how can you be with a man and you don't sleep with him in this country do you know anybody that does that he generally he... but God said that's not true I'm gonna show you scriptures where you don't have to Jesus his mother was a virgin right it's like in those days they were mostly virgins right and most of them were getting married most of those women in those days right in the Bible they were getting husbands it's these days with all the fornication and sexual issues it's even harder now to get married sexual sin is so much now and marriage is harder now can't you see so when you start to do the will of God the Bible said God will bless you you will be like a man that built your house on a strong foundation not someone that when the wind comes because it's on the sand they will just push it away let us rise on our feet we will pray say father from today I want to be a doer of your word privately and publicly I want to be like Jesus for real for real I don't care what others are doing I want people to surprise me privately in a private place and still see me and say yes you are like Jesus for real pray this prayer from your heart mean it mean it only God knows your heart he knows if you're truly see the devil doesn't like this kind of messages trust me he doesn't he doesn't like messages that make people be like Jesus he likes messages that make people say yes money 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 because he will start putting evil ideas in their head let them go and make money with evil evil means and stuff he doesn't like messages that makes people be like Jesus he doesn't like salvation messages he doesn't like messages that make people live a pure life a righteous life but this is the kind of messages that pleases God because God wants you to be saved he wants you to have everlasting life he wants Jesus to raise you up when he comes on the last day he doesn't want you to be lost he doesn't want Jesus to lose you that's why he gave me this message for you privately and publicly I want to be a doer of your word Lord I'm tired of faking I'm tired of living double lives 
I'm tired of being good today, tomorrow I'm somebody else. I'm tired of being this in the church and in my workplace I'm somebody else. I want to be like one person only, all the place that I go to, and that one person is Jesus. I just want to be like Jesus. God is searching your hearts right now. I'm going to say the salvation prayer for people here and the people online. If you haven't given your life to God, that's the first step. How can you be like Jesus when you're not saved? How can you be like Jesus when you don't believe that he came and died for you? You have to accept him as your Lord and personal Savior first. And then you will be filled with the Holy Ghost and then the Holy Spirit will teach you to become more like him every day. Will teach you how to live a sin-free life. Oh. So if you know that your relationship with him is not what it's supposed to be, say this prayer after me. So that from today, you will be a doer. You will be like Christ. You will be saved. You will have everlasting life. He will raise you up on the last day. You will leave to please God, not man. I could care less about man. Man cannot give me salvation. Man did not come and die for me. Man doesn't care about me. Man will lie that they love you. And after they sleep with you, they will marry somebody else. I say, sinner, I confess my sins. Please forgive me. I didn't know any better. I am tired. To, I'm, I'm tired of living different kind of lives. I'm tired of being one person here and another person there. I believe that Jesus Christ came and died for me on the cross of Calvary so that I can be saved. I accept him as my Lord and personal Savior. Be the Lord of my life, Lord. I want to do your will, Lord. I want to be like you, Lord. Inside out. In the name of Jesus. Everyone that said this prayer, be filled with the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Be filled with the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Be filled with the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. From today, your life will never be the same. Heaven is rejoicing. I don't come out here to please man. I come out here to please God. How do I please God? When I win souls for Him. When I make people change their ways. When I tell people what's wrong and how they can live a good life. That's pleasing unto my daddy. I want you sick and first. You live righteously. You do his will. He will give you everything you need. Everything else shall be added unto you. It says it in the Bible. So now that we have given our lives, we are filled with the Holy Ghost. It is now time for blessings to be added unto you. He told me today, I should pray for sick people. So I want to pray for anybody that is sick. Any kind of illness. Even if you're watching online. If you're on wheelchair. If you have HIV. If you have cancer. Whatever you have. God specifically instructed me today. That the first set of people I pray for. Are people that need healing. And they will be healed. And God never lies to me. If you are here and you need healing. Come up. But if you don't need healing. Anyone online. Just stretch your hand. Stretch your hand. Even the people watching, stretch your hand to the phone. 
If you've been watching me, you know that a lot of miracles have happened just from watching the video. You have repented. You have promised to do his will. You are filled with the Holy Ghost. Now he will do what he needs to do in your life. You are the Lord that healed me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your Jesus. Receive your healing right now in the name of Jesus. From head to toe. Any kind of sickness. I don't care what it is. That demon responsible for that sickness. I cast it out of you right now in the name of Jesus. I command healing to flow into your body right now. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Some of you will begin to feel heat inside your body. God is working on you. For the ones that are here, I want to lay hands on you. Whatever it is that is making you to be sick, I don't need to know what it is. God knows what it is. From today, I command that sickness to die in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. You are healed in the name of Jesus. You are healed in the name of Jesus. Believe and it's done. Whatever it is that is in your body that needs to go, I command it to come out right now in the name of Jesus. I command healing in your body right now. Flowing from your head all the way down to your toes. Receive healing right now in the name of Jesus. That thing you're expecting from God, receive it right now in the name of Jesus. You are healed in the name of Jesus. He specifically said, pray for healing. I obey. I told my mother yesterday. What did I tell you? So if you, if you believe you are healed, then it is done. The next phase is to receive a fresh fire, fresh anointing. Receive power to be drunk in the Holy Ghost. We can't come here and not be drunk in the Holy Ghost. Begin to speak in tongues, everybody. Shake a little bit Keyboard louder, a little loud. Shake a little, little. If you need to move around, move around. If you need to move around, move around. If you need to move around, move around. Rap a little baba baba. Sit a little bit. Roko so po ba da 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 da. Even if you're online. Speak in tongues. Shaba ba ba ba. Raise the bed of Say, Holy Spirit, take over me right now. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, take over me right now. Do you know He listens? Once you give Him permission, oh yes, He will take over you. You will start to feel goosebumps on your body because you have invited Him to take over you. You have invited Him to take over you. Holy Spirit, take over them like never before. Be filled with the Holy Ghost, all of you. Be filled with the Holy Ghost, all of you, in the name of Jesus. Receive fresh fire, fresh fire, fresh fire, in the name of Jesus. A fresh anointed. Receive it. Receive it. In the name of Jesus. Speak it up. Oh, la, 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 Bosha. Yes, it's happening. That's right, that's right. Oh, ba, 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 ba. Yes. Oh. Fresh fire. Fresh anointing. A 
That's right. You'll be feeling goosebumps all over your body. Chills all over your body. That's right. That's right. That's right. Feel so good. 
refreshed. You will feel so good. Oh, let it out. Let it out. Let it out. Yes, again. Let it out. Let it out. Some of you, you will begin to prophesy. Some of you will start to get open vision right now. Some of you will, be, will begin to hear from God. He says in the last days, he will pour out his spirit. Unto his sons and daughters, you are his son, you are his daughter. His spirit is upon you right now. Speak that talk. Let the spirit pray. Yeah. We are not here to play. We are here to fellowship with the Holy Ghost. So let the Spirit of God work in you. That's right. We are not people that are coming to look at other people pray. No. We want to connect. Some people may think what you are doing is abnormal. No, it's not abnormal. That's how they called me abnormal. When I first started preaching, they say, what is she speaking? But when the miracles started to come, the testimony started to come, now they all want to speak in tongues. Yes, let it out. It's coming from your belly. It's coming from your belly. Yes, you need to release it. Release it. That's right. That's right. That's right. Release. 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 Yes. 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 You came down here to do the will of God, not to do your will. Do you know the will of God for you? To live a life that pleases Him. What you are doing now pleases God. Speak it up. That's right, I hear some tongues. I'm hearing some tongues I never heard before. Some of you are speaking tongues that they've never heard before. People are speaking new tongues. Yeah. Fire, fire fall on me. Holy Ghost, fire, fire fall on me. Just like the day of Pentecost, fire fall on me. Like the day of Pentecost, fire fall on me. Holy Ghost, fire. Fire fall on me, Holy Ghost fire. He says we are not here to please man. We are here to please him. I heard it clearly. He said you did not come to this fellowship to please anybody but God. So when he says pray, pray. That's right. When you leave here, you will know that something happened. And not only that, you will become a doer of his word. You will begin to live and act like Jesus. And love like Jesus. And be fruitful like Jesus.
I hear this so clearly. God told me just now, he said for everyone that came here, despite the few hours invitation, he says, tell them I have a reward for them. I heard it clearly. He said, within seven days, you shall receive a big reward from him. He's speaking to me right now. He said, I told you about this last night and you are here because you want a fellowship with him despite the short notice. He says, tell them I have a reward for them. He gave me the number seven days. You will be sending me a testimony within seven days, not a small testimony, a big testimony because, oh, receive your reward right now in the name of Jesus. Even those that are watching online, you spent time to watch and listen to this message over two hours. Receive your reward in the name of Jesus. The next time we will meet here, you will come with a testimony in the name of Jesus. My God is a rewarder of people that diligently seek it. He doesn't let you go empty-handed. Remember that song we started with? Do not let me go The same way I came Touch me with your hand Touch me with your hand Jesus Do not let me go Do not let me go Do not let me go The same way He has rewarded you now Touch me You need to sing this song because he said you have a reward if you've been following me, all of you here have come with testimony before. So many testimonies. So you believe what I'm saying. I'm not just empty mouth talking. We have miracles in this ministry. Touch me with your hand. Touch me with your hand. Jesus. Oh, do not let me go. Do not let me go. The same way. The same way I came. Touch me with your hand. Jesus. He said, I have a reward for them. Within seven days, they shall see it. So this song that we started with, it has been answered. Because you are not living the same way you came. Not only are you blessed by this word, you have a reward. Some of you are crying because in your heart, you know that what I'm saying is true because you are getting confirmation from God. Oh! It doesn't matter how many people show up. He says, where two or three people are gathered together in his name. He said he's here together with us in our midst. We are more than two. We are more than three. Meaning he is here. Why do you think you are crying? I see a bunch of you crying. Where do you think the tears is coming from? It's because Jesus is right there beside you. His presence is what's making you cry. Oh, I just want to say, Baba, a Thank him for that reward. I just want to say, Baba, oh, thank him for the reward. Sing that song. I just want to say, Baba, oh, that means thank you, Lord. I just want to say, it means I just want to say thank you Lord thank you for the word that you gave us the message thank you for the reward thank you for forgiving my sins thank you for giving me one more chance to be like Jesus thank you for helping me to be like Jesus thank you for being so loving to me Lord thank you Lord for life thank you for giving me another opportunity to prove to you that I just want to be good thank you for allowing me to see today there's so many reasons
Jesus, I want to thank you. So now we're going to sing it again. I just want to say with all your heart, Baba, oh, I just want to say, Baba, oh, If you're online watching, you need to thank him because you got rewards too. I just want to say, I just want to say, Baba, Baba, oh, I just want to say, Baba, oh, everything we did here is according to the will of God. The word that I gave you came with a lot of scriptures. I didn't just come here speaking on my own. A lot of you are blessed. You are not even feeling the way you felt when you came. You are still in the spirit. I'm only staying longer because some of you are still crying. Some of you are still... <laughs> Do you know when you're in his presence, you don't know when time goes. We've been here over three hours. It feels like 30 minutes. If God wasn't in this place, you will be bored. You would have left by now. But you don't want it to end. This presence... The way that you feel right now you just want it to be forever and it can be forever because Jesus had this presence forever since you are becoming like him now you will always feel his presence you will always be like this stay in his will hallelujah for today Abba Abba Father Oh, we love you Abba Father Now thank Jesus Thank you Jesus Thank you when you sing it slowly and softly. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He loves it when you thank him because he's done something in your life. Thank you, everybody God is speaking to somebody he's giving you a word I hear peace I hear love oh Jesus it is so good to be in his presence he's speaking to you Holy Ghost, do it again, do it again in my life. 
May God open your eyes. From today, you will begin to see beyond the physical. In the name of Jesus. I prophesy. I prophesy. I prophesy. That your effort that you made to come here shall not be in vain in the name of Jesus. Oh, I hear that consolation. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I have prayed for so many people and so many people have come with testimonies about this. So if you believe that God that I serve is real, receive that consolation in the name of Jesus. I hear loans paid off. I hear it clearly. He's paying off your loans. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I just keep hearing debt free, debt free, debt cancellation. Somebody here, you will come back with this testimony. Somebody online, he said, you are going to be debt free. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive financial breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Supernatural financial breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Spiritual husband, I hear it. I destroy everyone that is dealing with spiritual husband. I destroy that evil spiritual husband. Right now with the fire of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. I free you from that kind of bondage. You are free in the name of Jesus. No more sleeping with somebody in your dream. Anytime that thing ever tries to happen, they shall be destroyed by fire in the name of Jesus. I surround you with the Holy Ghost fire. You are untouchable in the name of Jesus. Any evil that tries to come around you shall be consumed by the fire in the name of Jesus. Yeah! That's right. Speak it. Fruit of the womb. I hear it clearly. Your womb is blessed. I see a baby boy. You're going to get pregnant soon. And you shall have a baby boy. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I hear it so clearly. So clearly. Oh, marriage restoration. I see a number, 74. 74 people. God is restoring your marriages. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Your partner, your husband, your wife, they will begin to love you like never before. And not only that, they will be saved. They will love God too. In the name of Jesus, there will be peace, love, unity in your home in the name of Jesus. I hear, break every chains. Every chain, demonic chains. I break them right now in the name of Jesus. You are free in the name of Jesus. Yeah! You are delivered in the name of Jesus. Come out of that place. Come out of that cage right now. In the name of Jesus. That's right. Some of you are getting confirmations as I'm saying this. God is speaking to you as well. You can hear that the, God, the, the, the spirit, you know the spirit is one. As he's telling me this, he's telling you too. You're getting confirmation. Somebody has a skin problem, a skin disease. Receive healing right now in the name of Jesus. It's like pimples coming all over your body. I don't know what it is. I see pimples like all over your body. I command healing in your body right now. Even the black spots that it caused, everything erased in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Something is happening here. Be drunk in the Holy Ghost. I love you. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Yes. Oh, Speaking tongues wherever you are. Speaking tongues. Speaking tongues. Speaking tongues. Speaking tongues. Speaking tongues. Speaking tongues. Demonic oppression. From today. No more demonic oppression in the name of Jesus. You are free from that in the name of Jesus. Hmm. I hear jobs. 73 people will get new jobs. Not just any kind of job. The job of your dreams in the name of Jesus. Receive your miracle job in the name of Jesus. Make sure you come back and testify. Hundreds of people have come back to testify about jobs. You are going to be one of them too. Salary increase. I don't know who you are. It came so strong in my... I, I hear it so clearly. Receive your salary increase. You don't know how they're going to do it, but they will do it. This week, 
that is coming. It will happen. Make sure you come back and testify. In the name of Jesus, it is done. Oh, shabababa shandaha. Resekete bababa sete. All of you, put your hand on your belly. Everybody, everybody, put your hand on your belly. Father, I pray for your fire. Holy Ghost fire. Work in their body. Melt away anything that doesn't belong in that body right now. Begin to feel that supernatural heat in your belly right now. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Oh, he's cleansing you. He's purging you of every evil. If you have swallowed anything in your dream, you will begin to vomit it right now in the name of Jesus. You will want to go pee pee. You will want to whatever, excrete it somehow. You are delivered in the name of Jesus. Every evil deposit in your body, I command it to come out right now in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, walk in them. Holy Spirit, walk in them. You will start to feel fire around your belly. You will feel heat around your belly and your back area. Receive it in the name of Jesus. God is working in your belly. Oh, some of you will feel heat around your back shoulder area. Yes, he's working in you. Some of you will start to cough. Some of you will start to yawn. Some of you will start to run to go vomit. Some of you will want to go pee-pee. Something is coming out of your body. Something is coming out of your body. You are healed. You are free. You are delivered in the name of Jesus. I hear total restoration all over your body all over your life receive it in the name of Jesus I hear my cup run it over your cup shall run it over goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life it says I keep hearing it your cup will run it over in the name of Jesus oh thank you Lord the presence is so strong in this place thank you Lord thank you Jesus Thank you, Jesus. Everybody just wave your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you for such a wonderful service. Even as we go, go with us. We are full, Lord. I hear him say that you are full. All of you, you are full like he fed you. Like you are full. I need to ask somebody. He's telling me you are full. Are you full? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Amen. Yes. He says that you are full. I keep hearing it. He says they are full. He has fed you. Did you hear when Jesus says, my meat cometh from doing the will of my God, my Father? He says you are full. Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, God. You will be full forever in the name of Jesus. You will stay in his will in the name of Jesus. You will impact lives. You will go out there and tell people what you have heard. You will tell people that it's not all about miracle money and all this. It's about doing the will of God. Being a doer, not just a hearer. In the name of Jesus, I cover you and your families with the blood of Jesus. He said that in seven days, that reward you will receive. So I am looking forward to, your to hearing your testimony. It is done. See, it's not even about even if he re whether he rewards us or not. We will still love him. Just like Job said to his wife. He says, he, he says, it, 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 must we only expect good things from God and not bad things? It doesn't matter whether God took everything from me. I'm still not going to curse God. So we, we will still love him whether he gives us reward or not. But he's such a good God and such a generous God that he's even giving us reward. So we just thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We are full. Until we come back again and worship you again. Be with us, Lord. In Jesus' name. Let's say the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now forever, ma'am. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you all for watching online. We love you. Share the video. Bye-bye.